Hello and welcome to the Pixelated Get Realms Games Cast, your guide through the digital landscape, untangling the mysteries of your favorite titles and discussing the latest and greatest in video game fun. I'm your host, Alex Salerno. Alongside me is my brother, Tyler, and my good friend, Dustin. What's up, guys? How's it going? What good is morning. Up? Another great morning in the video game world. Early Sunday morning with my wife being like, what the fuck do you got to do this podcast so early? Can I sleep in <laughs> one day on the weekend? And I'm like... No, no. I, no. <laughs> I, I have a commitment. I'm sorry. I was like, text Alex if you have a problem with the time. I think it's early too. <laughs> I don't know how to start we start a support group for the wives of, <laughs> yeah. uh, of the pixelated realms. <laughs> Who decided 9 a.m.? I don't. I want to sleep in too. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how that happened, but somehow it happened. We can Honestly, move. actually Emily did because Emily was like, "Okay, 9 a.m. is early enough where it doesn't fuck up my Sunday." And <laughs> so I was like, I think that's, I, I literally think that's how and the it kids, came to be. So yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I was like, I don't, because it's true I don't, though, like she, if it's any later in the day, like if you do, if we started this at 11, right? Like it's like, we get that around one and it's like, you're half your Sunday's gone. So yeah. I yeah. get it. We, we gotta, gotta provide that coffee energy to the podcast for our viewership. So I know. Well, between, I mean, between 12 and three is nap time. So I can't, I can't, you know, talk no loud during those, those hours. Um, but yeah, we'll have to figure that out another time. Clearly, well, yeah, Alex needs to move. But, I mean, that sounds what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it might move, but probably not any closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what have we been sad. doing in the game world, guys? <laughs> yeah, what's video games? What? Um, video games? Gamecast? Y- yeah, so uh, I've been watching Fallout. And I we will talk about that. Fallout. So I'm yeah. not going to give any any early spoilers yet. But I've been watching <laughs> Fallout, and um, I download. It made me want to download Fallout, so I downloaded Fallout New Vegas. Um, I, saw. I debated. I was <laughs> I was debating because uh, we will talk about this more later. So I'm only going to go into a little bit. But I was like, do I play Fallout Three? Do I play Fallout Four? Do I play Fallout New Vegas? I never beat New Vegas, so I was like, all right, I'm going to heavily mod New Vegas um and and play that one so I'll, it's we'll funny because about- i read your mind yesterday when i was playing uh rogue trader and i just see alex <laughs> alex has logged on to new vegas uh-huh. alex has logged on to new vegas and i go alex is sitting here modding new vegas yeah. <laughs> so like, steve is such a giveaway like i literally knew exactly what you were doing yeah <laughs> see you log on every five seconds yeah <laughs> all right does this one crash it is this one crash yep. it nope. this okay one crash we're it? good all right. yep. <laughs> exactly what i was doing <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. I uh, downloaded Warhammer Chaos Gate, which yeah, is, I, is pretty I, fun. It was on sale, so you pulled the trigger. Yeah, pulled the trigger on that. It's like the XCOM version of Warhammer, and I like it. I like it a lot better than um, XCOM, and I know a lot of people are going to be really pissed about that. But like, we should uh, like X- debate that. <laughs> I know, right? XCOM what, for me was just too uh, unrelenting, and it's. It, it was i know it's it's a very pure rng experience and a lot of people like that and i totally understand and it's like hey you have a f- you know 60 percent chance yeah. to hit and it's it's like yeah either you hit or you don't or whatever but uh well you should we I, talk about it like should we go I into mean, that a little bit i mean if you want if you want to talk about it i will not stop okay. you i just felt so, like xcom mm-hmm. 2 was I, I i was just getting mutilated even on yeah. easy mode and yeah. I was just like, mm. I, the game is cool. The game is fun. It's very it's well made. But I just couldn't do it. My my e- my not my ego, but my psyche couldn't handle yeah. the amount of ass kicking that I got. It's it's a very fair uh, assessment, um, and that's totally true. But there's certain things. Having played and beaten XCOM two through on a normal difficulty, I had very well, first and foremost, I had very similar feelings. But let's let's draw like a direct comparison here. So. Uh, <laughs> Warhammer, I, I don't want to butcher it. It is uh, Warhammer Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is the game Alex was referring to. Mm-hmm. It was uh, recently on sale. It might still be on sale, uh, depending on when you're listening, uh, for a high amount. So, uh, But it is essentially a Warhammer version of XCOM. And if you don't, if you've never played XCOM 2 or the XCOM series at all, you take a squad. It is a turn-based uh squad game you drop in with a few of your your uh your uh, your team of of members you move around 
but it's a very um it's more shooting focused so you um are usually having your character shoot at an enemy at a very low percentage of hit you also have options like overwatching which you might be familiar with from other games which means essentially that your character doesn't choose to shoot but if someone does come into their range they can then automatically shoot at them um, so that's kind of a, some core concepts of these yeah. games, but in general, they are turn-based shooting games that have a very cool, um, what would you say, like a co- in-action combat cinematic? It's feel? tactical. It's like a it's like a top-down RTS kind of view, but it's a tactical turn-based. It's, but it's not RTS. It's like no, I just mean like that's like the style. Over, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like Final Fantasy Tactics, or uh, uh, I'm trying to think of other like. Uh, fire emblem or you know things like that um mm-hmm. so so either way um even though i i think i thought the warhammer game was super fun i did not play it as much as alex but regarding xcom 2 and its difficulty so xcom 2 is actually one of my favorite games uh it, it's like after i beat that game i thought it was one of the most incredible games ever and it actually the the punishing ideas also bothered me a lot because in the beginning when you lose a guy on turn one, you know, you, you, you have to sit here and invest time into the party that you're creating. And mm-hmm. then you go into a mission and he gets freaking murdered on it, turn one. Yeah. And he's gone forever. That person's gone. Like you have, you just, that, that time and experience you invested in that character is gone. So it's super punishing in that sense. But it also, the, the counter effect is that you take super you are incredibly careful about every single step and move you make in that game and when you're dropping into these missions and i I can't explain the whole plot of the game but you essentially drop into missions you have an objective well there's usually a bonus objective or you know some some kind of other thing to do or you know do it as quickly as you can kind of secondary objective and the game is so punishing makes you say sometimes i'm not gonna be optimal i'm not gonna get the secondary objective i'm not gonna save the citizens i am not gonna get my whole team out and that puts a certain amount of like this super cool like i don't want to say realistic because that's not the correct term but like this interesting like pressure and finality to everything you do in the game and yes you can go back and save a load file but there's uh, the the true game mode is to not do that live with your actions and so even though the game is pretty long form it actually does have a roguelike feel to it yeah and and once you get used to it it does take a lot of time getting used to and i found that by the end of my overwatch or overwatch my xcom 2 playthrough i was overwatching most of my characters um and you do build up those characters the game does become substantially easier (laughs) yeah okay but my thing is like i enjoy a really tough realistic experience immersive hardcore experience i like that stuff hardcore is a good word for it yeah Yeah. hardcore you know meaning that the 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 risks are real punish but but what i really don't like in video games and i i I don't think these have to be tied together is when they completely disrespect my time and make me waste hours doing something. And then, so like, for instance, like if I'm building up a character and I spend a long time making this character and darkest dungeon is another good example of this that like I had trouble with. And I like games like that. Like I like dark souls. I've beaten, I've platinum most of them. Like I like that kind of punishment, but I don't like it if I can invest a bunch of time, make an investment in the game, and then instantly over because of an RNG thing, all of that gets wiped away and I have to start over from scratch. And it just seems disrespectful to my time and my investment. And I I understand that there needs to be an extreme punishment, but there can be punishment without completely fucking my time over because then i'm like listen i don't feel now that if i invest any time in this game i'm actually going to get the worth of it back and so like what i like a lot about this game is not only is it more forgiving it is still very tough though it's still very tough like i still have people getting down and And you're talking about chaos gate i'm talking about chaos gate so the warhammer um the thing i like about this game is so like if you um if your guy goes down he has basically like three lives and um, I think it's called like resilience or something like that. And so if he like gets killed, like killed, killed in the, during a match, 
back at your ship, it's like, oh, he's resilience from, from three to two. and But you can still use him. Then if he gets to zero, so if he dies permanently three times, he gets... He's either I don't know I haven't done it yet, but he's either dead or he like gets shipped back to the planet or whatever like that. He's gone, but he's off of your ship. You can't use him, but you can recycle some of his experience into another character. So you basically like can take like I don't know how much it is. Let's say like fifty, sixty percent or something like that, and you can merge him into another character. So it's like even if even though that guy's dead, your investment in him is dead. Um, there you You're spent, still like, carrying some of that there's yeah. it's not a complete loss right you're like okay like i get it uh you know i was too you know gung-ho with this guy he died a bunch of times and he had really good gear and lots of experience so he had a lot of abilities and stuff like that it's like now but i some of that will be saved and i can That's start cool. so i'm not starting a new guy over from scratch um and i like that and you know and on top of that the game is just very fun um, because it's got that cool gothic Warhammer military aesthetic and stuff like that. You know, and the Space Marines are really cool. And, you know, they, like the story is pretty good. And I mean, I'm just enjoying it so far. Like yeah. it, it's it's a good experience. And I think I, I picked it up for like it was on sale when I got it. So I like picked it up for like six or seven. Bucks. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. really cheap. Yeah. Um, but I'm liking it. <laughs> I like it. And, you know, we're on our Warhammer kick. So, of course, we kind of are like yeah. definitely want to play. But. You know, it's funny you mentioned Darkest Dungeon because I thought that was actually that's a really great example of a game. I felt one uh, similar to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. I felt like that one was too punishing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, there was too, there was too much negative happening for me to feel like I was ever progressing or ever having yeah. an opportunity to get better. And and it's funny because my fiance, who, you know, maybe we can get her on to talk about it and debate me. Um, she's beaten both one and two. She loves both of those games. But like, I just cannot do it. Like, it's just, if I can't feel like I'm progressing. So, and this was the same in XCOM or any games that mm -hmm. follow this pattern. If I can't progress at least a group of people, I don't need that that squad to be in every battle. But I cannot, like, I, I at least want to switch between a couple reliable people. If I can't yeah. have a team of reliable people in a game, then it's not fun for me to progress. Mm -hmm. And in Darkest Dungeon, I could never keep, like, a really reliable team. Yeah. Or, like, they would get these attributes that would make them so unfavorable, and then you'd have to wait two whole rounds to get them cured. And, like, you never had enough money for torches. You never had enough money for, for campfires. And all these different mechanics in the game that if you don't do it, they punish you so hard. And, yeah. and it it's once, you know, like, once again, I... I, tr I, tr I have probably like 20 hours in Darkest Dungeon. It's not that I didn't like give it a really good like like hustle for a mm -hmm. while. Um, and so like, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are like, dude, you just had to really get into it or something like that. And I just I just couldn't get there. And I, it's funny because I feel that way about XCOM 2. I'm like, oh, you know, once you get there, though, it's great. You know, <laughs> it's just it doesn't didn't happen this time. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah, like Darkest Dungeon, I, I like what you said that like you needed like a team to go through the entire game with. And I feel 100% the same way is like, I need something that anchors me into this world that's been with me from the beginning that I can feel like is a representation of my progress. Yeah. And, you know, be like, hey, these are my people. And like, like Darkest Dungeon, I get that like you're kind of the town and that you're hiring these mercenaries that are supposed to feel like they're like throwaway. They're very disposable. And, but like the town doesn't do a good enough representation of show of feeling of showing your progress. Um, like, I don't feel like, okay, even if I got wiped out, I have enough upgrades in my town that I can recover quickly. And, well, and that's the thing too, in that game, it's like you spend your currency, which is incredibly valuable on upgrading that particular character. Yep. So as soon as they die or become unusable, it's like, shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you're the whole, the whole thing is just, you, you, yeah. Like it wastes your time. Right. To me, like right. it, to, it, to, if I'm just going to restart my whole game, if, like it's one of those games you want to just restart. Yeah, exactly. And I did the same thing with Darkest Dungeon where I gave it like a good college try and it just didn't work out. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm not, I'm not doing this again. But, uh, but yeah, so Warhammer game is good. 
The game is good. Um, I've also been playing randomly. Speaking of difficult games, I've been playing For Honor. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So I kind of I so Dragon's Dogma. Should have hit me, me up. Talk... I'll play with you. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> um, I want to talk about Dragon's Dogma two a little bit. I think, I think, I think it might be going to the graveyard because that oh. I, I just like I've been playing it and it just. It, the hooks weren't deep enough in me. Like I'm, I'm not attached enough to the story. I'm not attached enough to the, the characters and the exploring is good, but it's not great. It's no Skyrim. It's no Witcher. Like, it's not like Breath I'm of the going, wild, even though you hit it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, even still, like, it's <laughs> not like, uh, you know, they want you to, they, they're trying to um, get you to explore the, the world. And that's like very encouraged in the game. But, it's like, oh, I found a cave. Okay, there's monsters in the cave. Okay, all right, there's a just like okay piece of gear inside. Okay, you're like, what am I playing for? When like, if you play games like The Witcher or something like that, where you you Complex. you never like, know what the hell is about to yeah. go down, right? Like, you go, you do some stupid ass side quest, and you don't realize that that's about to open up a can of worms you couldn't believe. You know, same thing with like Skyrim and all these things, like. You know, oh, this this just happens to be, you know, the the there's there's like a ghost here. Okay, that ghost is a princess. You know, blah blah. You know, whatever it goes down that that rabbit hole. But like, Dragon's Dogma seems so vanilla. It seems, uh, yeah. Like it's interesting you say that because I always thought Dragon's Dogma. I've played the first game. I've watched like a good chunk of the TV show. Like all in all, like I think it it it's supposed to be this like vanilla medieval dragon esque fantasy setting for you to mm -hmm. impose yourself into and i think there's like positives and negatives to that positives are like you can create the experience that you want with that game like it it feels open negatives mm -hmm. are that i do feel it is very generic like overly generic um it's kind of like i'd go as far to say like kind of uninspired like yeah. it's a dragon yeah and that everything else was medieval with some you know typical mix of magic and whatnot so it's like i i really like the idea of that game but i feel like it just with the the core concept of the ip is never gonna be like and it could never exceed an eight out of ten ever no like it couldn't eight, and and then, and then you're just like okay you know but so I'm, maybe someone else feels differently let us know in the comments but still yeah you know. But you know, I'm uh, I'm chucking that in next to Skull and Bones with uh, games that I've abandoned this year. Yeah. And yeah, uh, so I picked up For Honor because that's one that I've been wanting to play for a while, and I, I like it. It's it's good. It's uh, the I've played through like the story part of the game right now, and it's pretty good. Uh, it's not great as far like I like the I I would love to see a For Honor two that really takes the combat system that they have and really doubles down on the complexity and the and the the coolness of it because to me one of the things is so if you don't know for honor it's like this dual based medieval game so you're like it's kind of ubisoft um, right it's an ubisoft game and it is you like lock on to another player and you have like you can defend in either up left or right and then you can um you're basically like they're trying to attack a high you can block high you know that kind of thing or you can attack low well you know whatever and so it's kind of this like game of you know like rock paper scissors ish um kind of kind of method but the thing is for a game that is trying to be very dual based like that there's a little bit of slop in it and um you know as far as like the frames are concerned and stuff like that as opposed to like when i play games like dark souls like you know exactly like that that sword hitbox is going to be exact you know what i mean and like your your animation for um is going to be the same every single time and so like that. And um, in this, I noticed like some of the animations will cancel early or um, the hitboxes aren't exact or um, some of the attacks are a little too wild to the point of where it's like, OK, I can't actually can't tell. Predict it. No, yeah. I can't. And so it's like, OK, I wish they would really like if they were to make like a second one, they would be like, OK, make it really crisp, make the hitboxes perfect, make the attacks more deliberate make um put a little bit more of the um i forgot what it's called but the the like weight window like between moves um stuff like, like that the, the startup frames uh the the end frames so like when you like oh, attack and you like recovery frame the recovery frame thank you so yeah. like some more of that because right now you can recover like very very quickly 
Um, well, I feel like it's worth talking about the story of For Honor a little bit, um, having lived through it a little bit. So For Honor was going to be a going to be it, it was planned to be like a cornerstone competitive casual like medieval fighting game for ubisoft like this at the yeah. time for honor came out it was supposed to like they were expecting it to be their like flagship ip for the next 10 years and it came out and i don't remember if like the negativity was surrounding gameplay but i do remember it was basically impossible to get online and connect mm -hmm. like the the online servers didn't work if i remember correctly um like there was only a couple heroes like basically the game just came out in shambles too early um and it was just a flop like it was pretty much just like an immediate like okay like ignore it and over time i mean they never quit on it and it was kind of impressive um mm -hmm. it was one of those stories where they just never quit on it they kept adding stuff adding stuff adding stuff and you know it i wouldn't mm -hmm. say it ever really had its day again it never really got a second chance it definitely has it, like a very devoted player base though i would say but it was recognized and there was a small dedicated community that played it pretty fervently and it continued to do you know small competitions i you know i try to watch i watched some competitions one time and i thought it was you know like kind of interesting i downloaded it again i saw there was a lot more champions and and mm -hmm. like alex was saying you know the fun thing about this game is like you kind of run up to these other guys and you're like you play this little rock paper scissors right is he going to attack left? Is he going to attack right? Who's going to do what? And you, you kind of have, you know, you feel like you're dueling someone. And yeah, I thought that was also a really fun idea, but I agree with you where in the sense that like it was, it didn't feel as crisp as it could. And also there was always the factor of like, you're sitting there dueling a guy and then his friend just comes and body slams you from the <laughs> left. And you're just kind of yeah. like, well, I'm not really sure what I was supposed to do about that. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's. It, I feel like it was a, a re good recovery story, but it just you know, it and it deserves a little bit of credit, but will fall in the annals as a forgotten game. Yeah, I like it. My uh, my big complaint about it. it oh, sorry, we get a little echo from Dustin. Um, my big. Let's see. Oh, that's better. Um, my big complaint from it is actually the the level of microtransactions in the game. Um, and I, I like, I understand you got You got to make your money. Like I get it, but it's like being unabashed about the, the nickel and diming is, is kind of crazy. Um, like every, I, like I get it if you were to drop like a character pack with some content or, or whatever. Um, uh, but it's like, they're like, Oh, here's a $10 skin, you know, and here's this and that, and, you know, the typical microtransaction flow, but it's just like. Other than you get like you start with like five or so characters. I think it's like maybe three per faction. There's three factions. So maybe like nine. I don't know. Maybe nine characters. I don't even actually even think it's a full nine. I think maybe you get like seven. But there's like 20 something characters. So it's like you get this like small fraction of characters and you have to pay for all of the rest individually. And it's like I kind of and they have like season passes. or They'll be like you could buy the year one pass or the year two pass or the year three pass. And it's like I kind of get it. Um, but at the same time, looking at it, like, as a player who's just jumping in and who hasn't slowly purchased all these characters over, like, the last eight years or whatever the game has been out, I look at that and go, fuck no. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like the strategy needs to be kind of revisited and be like, you know, maybe we should have, after so many years, make these characters free. Or, you know, be like, hey, like, they're, you pay for them, and then after three years, it's free, and then if you bought the pack beforehand, maybe we'll give you extra skins or some shit. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm just spitballing here. But, like, just looking at it as a new player in a game that's been around for eight years, the, the amount of microtransactions was very significant. Uh, and, you know, that just put a little bad taste in my mouth because it's like if I want to um, play a character, I have to pay for it. Though they did allow you to play the character in training mode to, like, test them out. But, you know, that's training mode. I kind of would have, like... The issue with For Honor was just that like as I played it when it first came out, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, like some people just like got so into it right away, where like, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't think there were like brackets on like skill, oh. so like I felt like I just jumped in and mm -hmm. like was just like getting 
fucking destroyed over and over because like people were already like so much better than I was. And it just like made the game extremely unfun. Um, yeah. And I just didn't have the patience to sit there and learn like the exact the perfect parries and like all these different moves for the different characters to like be able to compete. So yeah, it just like got like uber competitive, like instantly yeah. within like the community. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, this game's just, um, I don't have the time to like, yeah. you know, get to that skill and like other people have so quickly that I just, I don't even want to play. So. You know, I might be remembering this incorrectly, but I believe there was an exploit in the game and they failed to patch it and someone won a tournament with that exploit. I'm pretty sure really? that was for honor. Yeah, I, I I don't have the information on hand, but I do remember a, a scandal around that. Wow. And so it was just like kind of things like that where one, if they had a devout competitive scene, they kind of lost it when, mm-hmm. when things well, like that occurred. I mean, that's a good point, too, because. Something that I found interesting about the game is so if you're familiar with um, like the Dynasty Warriors kind of a game where you have like two teams that are like one's attacking, one's defending, and you have a bunch of like NPCs and then you're like the strong hero and there's a couple of heroes. That's how the game is um, during its kind of normal modes. Um, And I found it very interesting that they didn't lean more into the competitive nature of the game. Because I agree with you, Dustin, like people immediately got competitive and they're like wanted to show how good they were and stuff like that. And so it wasn't just about it wasn't any more about winning the actual match. I don't think anybody really cared about that. It was about winning duels. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if they were to like and so I feel like there was a little bit of a mismatch between the vision and the actuality of how the game was played. And that's probably why we felt that because I felt that well, same the thing. The competitive is only the duels. They don't I don't think they do the the other type of map. It's just one on ones. Or right. Two oh, okay. Twos. Interesting. But see, that's yeah. where I see like if they were to come out with like another one, like a follow, like a four on or two or something like that, it's something they can improve upon. Is um, making the game either something that could be better competed in, um, you know, maybe like a five v five hero mode or something like that, as opposed to like whatever, uh, where you just kind of go and clash it out. Um, or I, mean, I don't there's know. There's things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, either way, it just is? didn't okay, work out. It just, it, I, the game in itself, it just didn't quite, like, mold as well as they thought. But there was some good ideas there. So I think if they do, you know, try to... I don't know if it's going to get a second one. It's, it's been supported so well for so long. I have this weird feeling like it's more like an Overwatch where they're never going to mm-hmm. truly make a second one. But who knows? Yeah, possibly. I mean, that Ubisoft has been doing that, too. Like, think about um, uh, Siege. Rainbow Six Siege, like that's another game that I, I love. Rainbow Six Siege, actually, that's another game worth worth mentioning. And Ubisoft actually has these like sleeper. I would say sleeper, just because I mean what I mean in the sense of that is like media coverage. Is they have these like sleeper live service games. They're actually one of the few companies who have like a really successful lineup of live service games. So like I would consider Siege um, loosely considered For Honor in that in that as well, um, and like that are really popular that are doing well that they probably have no uh I, you know uh plans for creating sequels for but that are doing really well um but this is the weekly roundup do you guys want to do you guys got anything to add i know i kind of took it over a little bit no i mean let's uh cool let's so, keep it rolling here yeah if you guys are if you're just joining in and you're new i didn't really go over it in the beginning and i apologize for that but usually what we do is we do our re- weekly roundup in the beginning which is kind of like what are we playing what's going on in the news etc then we're going to answer a few questions uh which you can do by going to pixelatedrealms.org slash ask that's a s k and you can write into the show, ask us a question, and we will talk about it mid-show. So we do have some questions. And then at the end, we're going to talk about kind of more of our core segment here. And we're going to talk about Fallout. Of course, the 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 show just dropped. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit. But first, let's dive into some of our questions. We actually have quite a lot of questions. Um, I'm a little worried for time, but that's a good problem to have. So first question by Dustin's Weekly Waifu, which is clearly Ralph. Um, Dustin, who's your weekly waifu? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't really have one this week, honestly. I was thinking about this as I didn't film the the favorite gaming characters segment, and uh, I had one in mind too. 
Oh, I was just you know what? It's not a waifu. I'm just gonna say favorite gaming character. I was gonna do Jen Sakai from Ghost of Tsushima because he's a badass and he's faced. He can with, be like, a waifu. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I guess it's yeah. not a waifu. It's called like husbando or something like that <laughs> uh, when it's a dude. So the husbando of the week is I Jen Sakai it. because that game's amazing and he's also just like faced with so many like different decisions where like he has to throw away like this code of honor that he's like been grown up with and like and he has like this difficult decision you know like like do what needs to be done and like save my people but know that like i'm gonna be outcast or follow this honor that like my father and uncle and everyone have taught me as a samurai my whole life and watch like watch myself and all my people perish. So, you know, he obviously does what needs to be done to save uh, his people. And at, like, oh, well, if you haven't played it at this point, oh, well. But at the end, he's basically outcast for for it um, by the samurai community. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, you know, he's a he's a badass who, you know, had a what's that quote? Um, it's like it's like the people who who have the means to do something, have the responsibility to do something. Mm -hmm. And um, he did, you know, no matter the consequences. So he's my, uh, he's my favorite character of the week. Nice. That's a great one. That's a great one. I love that game. Oh, God, I just want to play that game again. It's so good. And you're so right. <laughs> like the story is so good. His character progression is so good. I mean, it's everything about it's good. That's a good one. Um, all right. Next question from Ralph. It says, Ralph will set up his cam to be on the show at some point. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was no, that was his name. So he's been putting jokes in the names. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, so with celebrities having more and more cameos in video games, which cameo have you enjoyed the most? And did any surprise you? That's a good question. Might require a little mm. thought, though. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's just the flavor of the month. Like Keanu Reeves, Cyberpunk's the first one I think about. But like, I don't know. I, I kind of don't really care. Yeah, I I can't even really think of one, honestly. Um, I don't know. And is that is that even a cameo or is that more like? Well, I guess it is, right? But everybody knew it was happening because it was like so heavily advertised beforehand. Where I think like when I think cameo, I think it's like unexpected and like you're mm. watching something, you're like, holy mm. shit, that person's in the background, or like like the main character just talked to. Brad Pitt. But I can't you know. think of any of them in yeah. video games. Hideo Kojima <laughs> in Cyberpunk. Yeah. You know, right, in Cyberpunk. Like, that's the that's only a... thing I can think of. Uh -huh. I wonder what, uh -huh. Ralph, you need to tell us in your question next week is your name, which one you were thinking about when you sent this answer. No, we're going to have question. him on the show, finally. Yeah. One next of these week, days. Though? We'll see. I don't know. We'll if he listens I'll... to this and he texts me and be like, yo, I'm, I'm down, I'll have to message him. <laughs> But yeah, that's actually a tough question. That's a lot tougher. Like even just thinking about games that have like um, actors as the main character. Like what was the one recently? Callisto Protocol had um, Josh Trammell or let me see Callisto Protocol or whatever. Um, I mean, it's just it's or great any for of the narrative games, you know, but it, it's just like another flavor of acting, right? Like, I mean, think about Alan Wake too, right? I mean, yes, yeah. they're not super famous cameos, but like those actors are now famous because they were portrayed this video game character yeah, you know? so i yeah. pulled up a list from game rant it's the top 10 video game uh top 10 celebrities cameos in games it's drew carey in the sims was 10 kojima oh and cyberpunk um was nine conan o'brien and death stranding um oh he's that's got, right like, he's uh, otter game. on his head <laughs> yeah he's uh, like gary like coleman in postal 2 which what? i never played that i don't know what that is uh, oh, Kojima, it's a game where you go postal. It's not a good, not, not I guess well received so. game. Yeah, uh, Kojima ahead. also <laughs> appears in Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Um, Buzz Aldrin is in Mass Effect Three, I guess. What? Is I don't he know if it's actually him, 3? or if it's like oh, supposed like to be a, him. Just a name. Yeah, Stanley's like... in Marvel Spider Man, which that doesn't really feel like a big cameo. He's in like. He does that forever. Uh, Ricky Gervais in Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, and then Lewis Hamilton <laughs> is in COD, Infinite Warfare. That's two. And then the number one, 
was Logic appearing in The Last of Us Part 2. Wow, I As didn't know Logic was on the last one. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I looked at the Buzz Aldrin thing. He voices like a random civilian on the on one of the planets, so you wouldn't really know. And did you know that um, the girl from Game of Thrones, who is like the um, becomes the queen, um, the really pretty girl, she, I don't Natalie know, Natalie Dormer. So, yeah, uh, she Natalie voices Dormer. she voices Liara. Liara. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Or at least in one of the games. I don't know if it, not all of them, but I can see here that like she voices at wow. least one of them. Uh, very interesting. Mass Effect, uh, the whole one, two, and three, perfect yeah. trilogy. We don't have man. enough time to like, go down that loophole. Oh, all right. my God. Um, <laughs> Hold how? on. The one voice actress that I, <laughs> I loved when I found out, because uh, I watched Grey's Anatomy with my wife, is uh, Camilla Luddington. And I think she's super pretty. Uh, she plays like one of the doctors, and she actually Which voices. Does she play? She's uh, Joe. Oh, okay. Um, she's like Katie's watching Grey's Anatomy right now. Uh, she's been on the show like the last like I don't know maybe like oh, okay. We're five to eight one. years. Oh, okay, yeah. Like she's a newer character, uh, but she voices uh, Lara Croft in the newer Tomb Raiders. Oh. And I, when I found that out, I was oh that's pretty cool. What's up, Joe? <laughs> that's cool. Nice. All right. Next question. How old? This is from Ralph. How old should a child be when they are introduced to video games? What game is going to be the game you try to introduce to your children? Um, I play games already with Naomi, and she's one years old. Yeah. So yep. Same with Arthur. He's <laughs> four, know but I've been trying to play games with him since he was very young. Uh, uh, I started it's a, it's with... Uh, yeah. I started with, like, games based on stuff that he's interested in. So, like, I downloaded, like, this Paw Patrol racing game that, like, basically drives for you and he was having a blast with that on the computer and then also there's a peppa pig game um that we played together um and then i've tried to do spider-man with him because he likes to he loves spider-man and then trying to let him swing from the the buildings but i need to install that feature when i install i just need to set the feature where you can as and you're playing with somebody it's for, it's an accessibility feature but you can have both controllers working at the same time so like you could give the controller to naomi and she could be fucking around with it while you're actually using the controller to swing around or she'll think that she's kind of doing it um so like it allows you to kind of like guide them and course correct if they get off off track so yeah that's super cool I, I love that idea. And yeah, I've I've been playing Spider Man or I did with her too, and she likes to watch it. So like I'll have her sit next to me and she'll just hold like an empty controller. She doesn't you know do anything with it and she'll watch Spider Man. Like, oh very cool. <laughs> um uh, you know, cool. I, I don't know what the right answer for that is, but I've definitely been doing it early. I mean, I remember like one of the first games I ever played, I was probably like three or four. Uh, we used to play Math Blaster on the computer and like it's a Carmen San Diego game. And then I remember probably when I was like four or five playing duke nukem which i was probably way too young to play but i remember that yeah well he i remember so like the game has what was considered at the time like you know not nudity but like girls and you yeah, know it's like but... pixelated but <laughs> dad so... would put on the adult content lock so basically it would just remove all the like girls and bikinis <laughs> in the game which were pixels it wasn't like shit but yeah. i remember going i figured out a way to unlock it by Go just because he like locked it. I was like, I didn't actually care for the girls when I was like five, but I was like, I want in this mode. Like, don't you dare <laughs> tell me missing? what to do. Yeah, what am I and missing? so I figured out that if I loaded up his save, it would unlock it, and then I could reload mine back in, and it wouldn't lock it back. So wow. I was like, that. and it would get, and I was, you know, just Careful, like a bug. Get yourself in trouble. You I guys know, are here so this and be like, what the he fuck? Knows. You're but I, that is, I, yeah, I thought that so was really tame. Funny. Like I Duke know. Nukem. I know. Yeah. Um, well, either way, well, should we move on? Because I know we're running. Short yeah, we on still time. got more questions, so we got two more. Um, this one is from Ralph. Help! Uh, it says send Ralph help, Greg. So Greg, you're being called out. You need to ask some questions. Um, last week we talked about cartridge versus online games and having the ability to patch glitches and exploits. Do you guys have any glitches or exploits from games growing up that you remember? Also, should you? Oh, this is he's saying we should put a button on our webpage that leads to the ask link. Okay, um, exploits that we used. I mean, definitely. Um, let me think if, if I could think of one that was like the missing no in Pokemon was the one I missing think about no, the most. Yeah, right. that's such a classic. I mean, missing it was like a stack overflow in memory, which is such an interesting idea. But basically, it was a Pokemon that should have never existed. 
and it yeah. glitched the game and you can do like uh what was duplicate it duplication glitches. Yeah, yeah you could do a duplicate glitch you could catch him too technically but you yeah. could uh but, but you would could like do... corrupt your save file if you did i if i remember that was like it was like myth it was literally because no one wanted to test it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like a myth yeah so you would yeah, so there was like this like location on a water area in Pokemon like red and blue that if you sailed on it, there was a stack overflow error in memory. So basically it tried to find the 152nd Pokemon and to and um it caused a glitch and because it didn't exist. And so it, the the error message was missing number because it didn't missing have a number. It didn't yeah. so they called it missing no. And um in the 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 picture because it was trying to load a picture for the 151st which basically happened is it was looking in a section of memory that didn't exist so or well that didn't have a picture so the picture was this random gibber like random picture of yeah. just p- crap because just it was pixels. like it was like hey i found this thing in memory is it a photo let me see and it was nothing it was just like <laughs> all these like random shit but it would let you fight it and um because of that, it would let some item in your. I think it was in your like the tenth slot or something yeah, like whatever. that. Yeah, would get it was infinite number of items because I guess what would happen is it would write over that slot with like battle data, but this, but it would you know increase the number of items. Anyways, very very cool. You're right, Tyler. That's a good call out. That is that is the best one. I'll have to think on that as well if there's anything good. Um, this one's from Patrick. He says, "Please don't call me Uncle Patrick." uh hey guys loving the content two questions this week what is the game you always find yourself going back to single player or multiplayer what is the game you play when you have a lull in new content mine is either final fantasy tactics or terraria that's a great question yeah those are Um, both good ones too what do i always go back to there are i mean i have a lot of single player games that i go back to personally um sea of thieves we have been playing Sea of Thieves. I'll play Mega Man X and Duke Nukem a lot, yeah. which is like if I was to go as far back as I can. Like, I love playing. I have Mega Man. I have both of them actually on my phone now because I'm just like, hey, let's just play a game. Um, Duke Nukem is like one of my favorite all time games. Um, I mean, I'll play like Dead Space. Some like I have a list of like my top like 30 games that I love, and I'll just like rotate through that list every like decade or so. Um, well, you guys. Yeah, I mean, like, I have certain RPGs that, like, I'll just go and play every, like, five or so years or whatever. You know, I feel like mm-hmm. it. So, like, Knights of the Old Republic, I just, like, every, like, three years, I I beat and play that game. Um, You know, like, Oblivion or, like, Skyrim, I'll I'll get, like, you know, some kind of uh, a Bethesda game like Fallout uh, in there, and I'll, I'll play and beat those. Mass Effects uh, are another one I'll play. Uh, two is my favorite, but all three are great. Um, as Alex said, Mega Man X uh, is... Uh, it, I I beat the shit out of Mega Man X until I could beat it in under an hour. And then I was <laughs> like, okay, I'm good. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's... I usually... I, I always float back to WoW um, at some point or another. Uh, so there's a lot of games I go back to. Um, I uh, I... I yeah. What about you, Dustin? I, I, brought, I brought my list up real quick. Hold on, because I actually have it like written down. I was like, Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. I always go back to those. You're right. Kotar, Knights of the Republic, Soma is one that I actually play very regularly. I'll play that almost once a year. I love that game. It's a very short game, so you can like blast through it. Um, let me see. Halo One and Two. Yeah, Duke Duke and Mega Man X, Final Fantasy Nine. Those are kind of like the ones that I yeah. rotate through. Yeah. I don't think I go back to any old game like that. <laughs> Honestly, really? like I don't know. I'm trying to think about it. Like at least like since I had kids, I can't think of it. Where like because again, like time is so limited that like I'm just like uh, I don't know. Like I don't I don't find myself going and like just like wait like you know not wasting time but like you know killing time by just mm-hmm. playing an old game I've beat already. Um, I'll usually like. I, I find myself doing that a lot more with movies, honestly. Like, I'll instead of like getting into a new movie and investing time into that, or like a TV show, I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna watch this thing I've watched before because I don't have to pay attention as much. So, yeah, I don't know. Games, I, there's not a lot of games I could say like, oh yeah, I've beaten that game like five times. Like, I like once Boulder's I beat Gate it, no, One no, is okay. another one for me. I play yeah. that one a lot. Dustin will find All his right. game. <laughs> 
He'll find his game. All right, <laughs> this next question is a great segue. Have any of you guys checked out the new Fallout series? I've never played any of them, so I can't compare it to the game. Did you guys play them? What do you think of the show? Thank you for the amazing transition yes. over to our into next our, area. Uh, our but first, topic. I want to say before we dive in, we really appreciate everyone who follows us or and is subscribed to us. Um, we post new episodes every Tuesday morning on podcast services and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram threads and YouTube at Pixelated Realms. If you want to ask us questions or leave a comment, you can now go to pixelatedrealms.org slash ask. Leave us a comment, and we'll talk about it in the middle of our show. Uh, really appreciate it. We, the follows and the subscribes uh, are, like, amazing for us. That's how we, you know, keep, keeps our confidence up. So um, if you're subscribed and you've followed, make sure all your friends are, too. It, <laughs> it makes us feel good. We really appreciate it. Um, Fallout. So Tyler and I have watched about half of the show and we're also big fallout fans with dustin you have in really played much of the game so uh, like what is, what is your like hype level on this like what is this yeah, even what, what like move the needle for you at all I mean, do you even care it's cool you know like i'm glad that there's another successful video game adaption you know everybody i've been seeing online has been like very positive about it i'll probably watch it but yeah, I mean, I've never been a Fallout guy. Uh, I played four for about an hour and a half, and I was like, "This isn't for me." Played seventy six, I think, with you, Alex, for like a, <laughs> on Game an Pass. hour also, and you know, I was like, not really all that into it. So, I don't know for whatever reason, the Fallout games have just not been that fun for me. So, you know, I wasn't really looking forward to the show, but you know, yeah, I mean. I'm obviously a huge gamer and love when the community sees successes. So I'm glad that people are really liking it. And I'll probably check it out just because everyone said it's so good. But I haven't even watched The Last of Us yet on HBO. Oh, my God. You know? so we got to do that. I, I got like halfway through the first episode and I got like interrupted. And I was like, I got to like be able to watch this show and I can just sit down and not be interrupted. Plus, I don't want to watch it with the kids awake because it's kind of violent with zombies. I'm and scared, so like yeah. I haven't just found that moment to sit there and just invest in the last of us um series so you know i don't know eventually get around yeah. to it <laughs> yeah this one is also violet just a warning <laughs> um understandable yeah so uh, for those who aren't like super familiar with the, the fallout series or maybe you are but the fallout takes place in a post-apocalyptic future um in a in a kind of an alternate timeline where during like the cold war era uh, maybe a little bit earlier, like kind of during like the 50s, 60s, um, nuclear bombs hit the earth and so, like eradicate everything. And But technology is like stuck between, it's like as if the 50s style and the 60s style of technology got advanced, but the, but never like yeah, more advanced than it was. I don't know. Like they took that technology so and made yeah. Anyway, too deep into Fallout lore. Basically, the bombs drop in 2077. Actually, oh really? Um, and so basically, like I, something happens in World War II that's different, and there's a deviation. So basically, what the 1950s and and early 1960s style um, becomes the most prevalent and persists mm -hmm. for like a hundred more years. Um, and they advance technology to get robots and other things, but it's all through the guise of this 1950s, um, very, um, anti-communist, uh, red scare kind of, uh, filter. Very propaganda-y, very like, like Helldivers kind of esque where they're like, do your part for America, right? And kind of all that, like very fifties, right? Um, but it's also kind of good Nazis are dead Nazis. Yeah, and it's yeah. very like tongue in cheek. <laughs> like it's very much supposed to be like this like anti capitalist kind of you know satire. Um, and the show does a really really good job of nailing that game. Um, and so I'm I think I'm like five episodes in. I might be a little further than you are. And the 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 show is is spot on in the game and i'm so glad that we have another like we've been having really good video game adaptions this year and i'm really glad that they're starting to take it seriously because i felt like in the past a lot of writers in in hollywood for some reason they like to take it and make it their own thing and they don't like to stay be respectful of the original source material um and i feel like <laughs> what was that uh and hey I... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, a lot of shit like Resident Evil. A lot of Assassin's fucking, Creed. Assassin's Creed. Anyways, um, but I feel like they really gave this the respect of the game that it deserves. Like, it feels like 
a game, like the game. Like it feels like you could easily make plop, plop this into a game and it would work. Um, they have like, um, you know, the vaults, they have the Brotherhood of Steel, they have the Enclave and stuff like that. Uh, there is some slight deviations from the canon of the video games, but to it all totally makes sense um, within the confines of the show and within the universe. So it's like nothing that I'm like mad about. Uh, the characters are really well written. Um, like, for instance, like the main character is a vault dweller, um, as you would expect. And, you know, she's like really naive. And that's the that's the whole thing. And like, like almost overly naive. And that's the point. Like, it's trying yeah. to show that contrast. I mean, that's that's something like I I will will add on to here from what you said, Alex, is like the show does a really great job through all of its different methods of communication, like to communicate like the contrast between the mm -hmm. vault dwellers and the wasteland and, you know, like the different experiences and that they have. And I thought that was really cool. And like the vault dwellers specifically, like all of their clothing are very brightly colored. Vibrant, they're yeah. all overly diplomatic. They're like soup. They're, they're, you know, they're, helpful to a fault you know and, mm -hmm. and so it's it and and so it's a very interesting contrast when she goes outside and she's like sitting there I, I really like the main character's story even though i'm only halfway through i really like her story so far because it's it's showing how naive she is but like in a lot of ways it's kind of like you she's the player and we're in her slot so like when i'm walking around in fallout you know and i see someone asking for help like, I have the same reaction that this character has. And it's like, oh, I should go help them. You walk up and help them. But then you're in nuclear fallout. Like, you going and helping them means now you're subject, subject to danger. Um, and so, like, it's just kind of, like, you can really put yourself in the body of Lucy. She is, like, truly a main character in the sense that, mm -hmm. like, she kind of plays that out. Yeah. And she's learning the hard way, you know, that she has to... And it doesn't, you know, adapt. You know. And it doesn't feel out of place at all. Yeah. It feels like it's totally within her character, and it it it's perfect. And like I really like the character development they have in these. Not just her character, all the characters. So there's multiple characters. She's the main character, but there's a lot of characters, and they're all flawed. And they all go through these like progressions as you go through, and it's very well done. Um, and there's a lot, of, and the way they do the violence in the game is fantastic uh, because it's like over it's a little over the top um violently like in violence but it not to the point of where it seems out of place like it's it's in it's, the show or in the game in the show well in, in both show. right and one of the things that i really like about the show too is they put a lot of nods to the game yeah in a very very tactical way like a very good way like like they're like shooting off body parts of people and like you would do in the game or there's like a point in the where um the uh, one of the characters is like has this great line where they're like hey, where are we going and he goes well like i forgot the exact wordage but it's something along the lines of like what seems to always happen is we're doing some bullshit side quest and yeah. uh and you're like uh like i see what you did there right like uh, he was saying like <laughs> don't get distracted by bullshit side quests or something like that and, and it was just such a nod to like never doing the main quest in these games because yeah. you're always getting distracted by some bullshit so that like yeah. having those, you know you you can easily have flavor like that that doesn't land and that's the thing is like bad video game adaptations will do similar like nods to the original source material but it doesn't land so you know it's it's hard it's delicate yeah but when walter or uh, i think it's walter coggins uh delivers it it lands like <laughs> yeah. he is he's wonderful he this he was born for for this uh for this ip like in this series i think he does a great job yeah yeah he's he's i mean i like him as an actor like i've watched him since like justified and i thought he was so good in that and i love that show and he's also in other things like he's one of the bad guys in one of the Ant -Man movies and yeah and things like that but um yeah he does such a good job in this role um and I, I don't want to ruin anything because the show is like, you know, really, but I like that his yeah. character pre-war, like what he was, you know, that he was yeah. that. Anyways, uh, when you watch the show, you'll, <laughs> you'll find it, you'll find it funny. But um, the characters are all very endearing. The world is very much Fallout, which is beautiful. Um, they don't shy away from violence. It feels like a video game show to mm -hmm. me. And but that's what it should feel like. It should feel like yeah. a little bit of a video game, um, but not so it, much, you know, that you're like drawn out of it. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's just really impressive that 
we're starting to really see these video game adaptations that like somehow understand the essence of the game itself a lot better than the past ones have you know instead of like like fallout has been a really great example of like somehow and and, you know we're not a film podcast so we're not going to go into like super depth about this but like somehow it's taking the spirit of the fallout games and really representing it well in a tv show format in whatever way it chose to do that and that's really impressive and encouraging um and like i'm really like excited we got the last of us we got fallout like there's been a few others out there we don't need to name them all but like we're getting some really solid video game out of sonic like people really like sonic Mm -hmm. um so we're getting some really uh, solid video game adaptations, and that just makes me so excited because I personally am a huge fan of narrative-based video games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, we haven't I said this yet, but it's worth watching. It's like, I would give it yeah. like a 10 out of 10. Um, very good. And there's a lot of really good hooks. And it, it's, it's not just a good show, but like it actually makes you want to watch. You know, not enough shows you hit the end of an episode, you're like, all right, whatever. Like each episode has a really good cliffhanger that leads you to the next one. Uh, does it actually follow one of the games storylines no 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 not at it all. is after it post the games all so that's them. cool because the last of us follows the game correct right mm-hmm. i don't but know but the game I'm is sure a strong some. narrative line lineage yeah fallout is a exploration based <laughs> discovery game so it's funny because i think we can kind of loop this back to what alex was saying about dragon's dogma 2 earlier You know, that game, both Dragon's Dogma and Fallout are both completely discovery based games. You you explore a world, you grow your character. That's the fun part about the game. Fallout, however, has a very personality like developed experience. It, It feels yeah, in Fallout, it feels like if you're not playing the game, that world could still be existing and and thriving right and that can be a big thing in video games in video game immersion in general do i feel convinced that this world would exist if my if i wasn't playing a main character in this game dragon's dogma the answer is no in a game like fallout you feel yes like like joe at the general store actually goes to bed at 10 o'clock it, he walks to his house in and goes to bed and gets back up and and so like that's why bethesda actually like has always been one of the kings of these kind of genres of games because flaws they put yeah flaws are no seriously though i mean we, <laughs> people ignore bethesda flaws because of how good they are at mm-hmm. creating that immersion so Absol- yeah. um, i think it's really cool that we're seeing that in film yeah and you know uh, segueing into the game a little bit so like obviously this made me want to play the game and i downloaded new vegas we talked about that a little bit but um, I've seen a lot of people. There's been a lot of uptick on Fallout 76 as well, which is the like yeah. online game. Um, I actually randomly still have it downloaded on my Xbox like I'm app order because it's on, interesting. It's kind of I'm it's kinda... on Game Pass, so maybe we yeah. can drop in because I'm only playing it because I've it's never free. touched it. it I've never it, touched it. You know what? I I played it with Jake um, like a yeah. year or two ago or whatever. Um, I actually liked it. I didn't love it. I'll give you. I'll give you that. But as far as like what the idea of the game, the vision of the game is, I, especially for a game that's free on Game Pass, let me let me put that. I mean, I'm in context around. It. I mean... Yeah, dude, yeah, let's play it. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. It does have a lot of flaws, like a Bethesda game does, and I could see that it's one of those games though that when it launched, it launched like really it was, shitty, and it was yeah, content it had a horrible barren, launch. And now years later, it had so yeah. many patches yeah. to it that it's a lot better. I played it like a year after it came out, so I even played it after that. And then now it's it's, it's a it. game. Yeah, it's a game. I said to myself, like, OK, maybe three, four years, like yeah. exactly like freaking for honor. I literally yeah, said the same thing. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll play it in three, four years. And now I'm like, OK, follow 76. Sure, I'll, play, I'll try it now. It probably is pretty decent. <laughs> and it, it's worth saying, too, that I don't know if this is going to still be the case when the podcast airs on Tuesday. But as of today, Sunday, April 14th, um, the Fallout games are on sale on Steam. Oh, so um, pick up three, pick up four, pick New up Vegas. New Vegas. Let's see. So Fallout 76, normally $40 is eight. It's 80 percent off with if you get the deluxe pack, which has all the DLC, it's $20, normally 60. Um, Hold on, let me back up here. The special uh, Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition, $50 is now $5. Uh, Fallout 4. Oh, this is the VR edition. Well, normally 60 is 15. Anyways, you get the point. 
Uh, if I, as if, a Fallout fan, I'm going to go ahead and recommend to our viewership. I would pick up Fallout Three Game of the Year Edition, and I would pick up Fallout Three New Vegas. Um, Four is good too, that, but not it's, as good. That- no, it's good, but if I if you're coming into the series new, start with three, then go to New Vegas. Yeah, and maybe uh, some find people some might odds. say just start with New Vegas, but I think that might be a little bit of yeah. a barrier. I mean, it's kind of tough because Fallout Four is a much more the the visuals of the game are much are better. Uh, the story is dog narratively. Is, is it's dog not the shit. same though. The story, yeah. if you're okay, so here, if you like story, Fallout Three and New Vegas are better. If you just want to run around, explore, shoot stuff, and be more action based and build like a settlement, Fallout Four is better. It just the Fallout Four is yeah. a great is in my in Fallout Four's defense, I really like Fallout Four. Other than the story, the story is absolute dog shit. But everything else in that game is pretty good. Uh, the settlement stuff can do with some work, but. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I think that's fair, but like to me, Fallout Three, it's the best one for sure. It's a it's a much more difficult game. It's not holding your hand, so it's not you. You know, I don't want to ruin anything, but essentially, you know, you you're put into the world and good luck. You know, so you have to like really go off of your own like patience and exploration and instinct. But in the end, it is a more narratively interesting game. Yeah. Um, the progression's better, the, the the companions feel better. Four is more modern, and if you want your hand held a little bit more, that's fine. No no problems with that. It also does have a base building aspect that is, in my opinion, like distra- a big distraction. It's not what I really want to be doing in that game. Oh. Um, but narratively, it's just not as impactful. You buy the entire Fallout franchise. Well, it's normally well. It's tough for me to say because I already have games from the collection, so it's giving me a discounted. Um, let me see if they just show the individual. It's like fifty bucks. Wow, mine is less because, but it's it's you could buy every single Fallout game, including one, two, three, four, seventy six, and yeah, uh, like all of them. Yeah, for like fifty bucks. There's also, yeah, and I'm looking like Final Fantasy Tactics. There's a Fallout Tactics. Yeah, and um, and I'm looking at the the date. It is good. The sale goes to the nineteenth. So okay. if you're re- if you're if you're listening to this before the nineteenth and you're interested in Fallout, now's the time. All right. Cool. 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 And uh, the, I think this is a perfect time for us to close her up. Um, but Fallout, you know, to recap. Um, we love to play video games, and Fallout is good. This Fallout TV show yeah. is good. Play Fallout. Watch the TV. You show. guys got anything before we end? No, I think right. uh, I'm gonna go watch some more Fallout. Or yeah, maybe maybe or, we should play Fallout play 76. 76. We were yeah. gonna go to the Warhammer store, but maybe now it'll just turn into playing Fallout. Um. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to be notified when we post new episodes. We post new episodes every Tuesday morning on podcast services and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram threads and YouTube at Pixelated Realms Podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you much.